is not suitable for all investors. And everything I talk about here today is just my own opinion and not a direct trade recommendation. Um, with that being said, though, I think that this is the type of opportunity uh, or we have the type of markets that provide the top of our type of opportunities for traders. Uh, we've got trends happening across uh, the commodity space, and it doesn't really matter where you turn. It seems like markets have been moving around more than they have uh, in years past. Um, so uh, let's begin today. I've got a daily chart up here of the May soybeans, 718 and three quarters there out at the, uh, into the end of the day. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen us close above yesterday's high to really uh, put a nail in the coffin for the Bears uh, and proverbially get the ball back in the court of the Bulls. Uh, but we haven't um, you know, sustained a breakout, though, of the trend, um, I shouldn't say trend, the, the range uh, highs that we've seen here up in that 1730 uh, to 1750 area. So we have broken you know, above trend line resistances. Pretty much everyone you draw on a chart, some point breaks. Uh, we've been holding trend line support um, here for the last few uh, weeks and since February. That 18-day moving average has been a very, very good line in the sand. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're looking at May corn, uh, December corn, or May beans, December May beans or May corn. There we go. Uh, that 18-day moving average has proven to be a very uh, formidable support um, for the entire year so far. Uh, Going into the three wheats, uh, to take a quick look at those three daily charts, the Chicago, the KC, and the Minneapolis uh, spring wheat here, uh, have all been flirting with oversold conditions there in the momentum indicators over the last week here. Um, finishing down 12 cents today, generally inside price action on the Chicago wheat, um, but not a great, uh, not a great three-day kind of um, candle formation with a, what looks like a rounding top. The 18-day moving average is still coming into play here around that 11, uh, 15, uh, 11, uh, 15 area at this time. And, and that, of course, could said be you know support, now might turn into resistance if the market turns more bearish and we do, do turn lower. But if we dial down to the smaller time frame, uh, as we might have a chance later for wheat, um, we'll see that we could be holding 50% longs. Soybeans have not broken out uh, of their range highs, and we're not oversold-bought in that uh, daily RSI and momentum indicator either, so very much still a trending market, higher higher highs and higher lows now for one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six days running, depending on now is one, two, three, four, five days running now. Um, let's take a look at the smaller time frame for the beans. Um, going to keep this video relatively short today, get through the technicals for uh, our majors uh, and leave us with some ideas that we'll take into tomorrow's strategy of the week update uh, where uh, you know please do sign up to uh, join becoming part of that mailing list um, in the comment section or the uh, detail section of this video for that that uh, that sign up link 50 percent retracements from yesterday's lows which traded right around um, the open or you know from the the morning bell uh at, to to yesterday or today's uh candle highs uh, at 1736 the 50 percent retracement down around 1711 uh has traded three waves back um pretty textbook uh two steps forward one step back uh in terms of the correction i do have up a 233 tick time frame chart what this does is this charts out price uh, based off of the volume traded. So every 233 cars traded through uh, uh, generates a new candle. Um, so this is a way of looking at price action and taking time out of the equation. If we go down to a 15 minute chart, we can see very similar price action. Just uh, many of these candles that we can see on a tick chart with volume based bars, uh, we can see much more clearly, uh, you know, that period from 8.30 through 10 a.m., that was a 45 minute or 830 through uh, 915 that 45 minute period where we traded uh, from 713 low or you know after the bell there to 1736 highs that whole move uh, happened so quickly that on a 50 minute chart it's just three candles that we uh, can't really discern some of the price action that occurred within that that time frame uh, we pull down to that same uh, same 45 minute period here uh, in the 233 tick chart and you can see every little up and down ebb and flow, uh, microcosm penny move uh, before that quick sell off in that five minute period took us down to nine, uh, that's 1720 for that first test of support. Eventually found our way through, right? But 
very supportive level. This is also, um, you know, if you drew trend lines against the highs for where we kind of close there into the bell, created uh, the morning biscuit pause that is created that gap up after the bell. Trend line through that area, uh, we came back down to test that trend line, broken resistance now support in that 50% line. Uh, I like what I was seeing there. Um, this market is channeling higher. You can see the two yellow trend lines I've drawn on the chart to kind of signify that channel. But most importantly here, we're looking at these supportive trend lines that uh, doesn't matter where you draw them from. They seem to be holding on the soybeans over the last couple of days, weeks, and even months if we go back uh, far enough. So very much still a bull trend. Uh, the last three days of price action have confirmed that upside move within this range. We're back to basically testing towards the high end of the range. And this is an opportunity to break through that ceiling. If it does, great. Um, hopefully we've been positioned for it. Uh, I know that over the last week or so in this last dip, any call spreads we had on, um, for many of my clients, we tried to bag back the short calls, leave the long call exposure on. Um, some we even rolled those long calls down. Um, there was some futures buying here with stops below the, the lows of the last several days because you start to get those intraday signals uh, and reversals happening. You start to see those 50% lines holding to the long side, right? Uh, the, the supportive 50% lines, the trend lines holding on these smaller time frame charts. They give us short-term time frame trades to enter into the market, perhaps. Um, stops below trend lines, below the prior day's low for initial entries. Gives you 20, 20 to 10 cents of risk to play with throughout the day. Uh, and then if you're right, this market is moving. You know, here the last swing from 1690 to 1673, 36, excuse me, uh, in just 24 hours time, you had a 40 cent swing um, if you were timed right, you know, happened to actually buy. Um, that dip between Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday that took you down into 1690. Um, all that being said, the pullbacks are equally um, equally as vicious at times. Uh, you, you know, there are three or two here, uh, you know, to the magnitude of almost 30 cents, 20, 30 cents here, uh, and two within the magnitude of about 20 cents off the high. So, um, granted, they're followed by 40 and 50 cent rallies, um, but Nevertheless, that two step forward, one step back can be a pretty big one step when the two step forward are starting to get to the sides. So uh, keep that mentality you know, in your head, at least I always try to, is that we're expecting if the market can rally you know, X amount in a day, in a week, that means over that same time period, we should expect it to be able to pull back at least half of that uh, at any given point in time. And it doesn't mean we look out for it all the time. It's just a manner, just a, it's just a risk um, or, or a mentality for watching for uh, the counter trend in the market that sometimes needs to be, um, we need to remind ourselves of, you know, because many of these pullbacks, there was a moment where if you sat here watching the chart, you probably thought to yourself, oh boy, that's it. We might be rolling over. And sometimes we get that opinion right at the low. Uh, it's amazing how, uh, how that plays out. So moving out to a four hour chart here, we were very much in a price band, you know, in this larger pennant structure, kind of trading sideways. We haven't had much to say about it for the last couple months since the start of February. Once we went into that sideways structure, once we did, 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 were able to technically discern that we've broken technical, uh, you know, setups on either side of the market, can expect choppy sideways uh, price action. It's something we talked about last week's strategy of the week. Um, now we're we're going into the next phase of that cycle, which is what happens when a market starts to break out of some of those levels. Uh, and I, it was important to, I think, do this video today because today is one of the first days of that true breakout. We went up to test the trend line resistance we talked about against the highs in this pennant and soybeans uh, uh, over this last week, and we've been falling back off of it. Now we actually went through it, and not only did we go through it today, uh, on this four-hour chart, you can see us going through this a trend line that came around, you know, comes in down around $17, $10, $17, somewhere around there. Um, you can see on the 15 minute chart how the pullback, uh, that is this line right here going, cutting through this chart. This is us breaking through that level, maybe even gapping up and through it, coming back to test it one more time. Uh, and if this is the type of uh, setup that I am accustomed to seeing in the market, um, this is the last, you know, stop on the train before it heads up to a new high. Uh, and breaks out perhaps even higher. Whenever we get to that ceiling, um, contract highs, monthly highs, whatever you, even daily and weekly highs, once we start to go through it, um, I don't concern myself with picking a top at that point. 
we just let the you know we just hope for the best and let the market run uh, and trail our stops of course um, but at that point it's in the market's hands um, for how much the market's going to move um, if we're happy with the gains at, at, at any of those on any, on any of those instances of course take them but um, I'm not one to throw limit orders out onto how much you can make to the upside in this type of environment if you've got a position on and we're just now starting to break out of a consolidation. If we were further along in a trend, getting some orders as we start to make new highs and momentum starts to come off the table, yes, makes sense to start picking tops and trying to uh, get orders out there. But right at the beginning of a trend, you'd be selling yourself short in many ways uh, and leaving you know potential on the table for the position you've got on. Right now is the time to manage the trade, make sure you don't get stopped out if the market's gonna go in your favor, but try to manage that risk as high as you can. Uh, in this case, trailing stops up against the day. lows of the day, maybe the trend lines here. Uh, I like um, you know lows down around 1690. I think a stop here below 16, 1700 is probably safe. I am worried we might see one more move down to 1609 just to run any of the, the stops that are sitting there. But I do generally think we're going to stay above $17. And um, you know, I think we've gone through a, a resistance area in the market that is now supportive here and that I'm drawing this gray box in the market that we're now trying to fight and stay above. So heads up, could get another couple tests of this kind of area, but I think stops below 1690 give you enough berth, uh, in my opinion, that if we go all the way back down there, we're falling probably back inside the larger range we've been in. Um, and there's nothing that says we couldn't go down to test 1660 or, or one of those better trend lines below us. So um, we'll see. But uh, I'm anticipating a move back to high 16, uh, to 1736 uh, and, a, and a move uh, through two, two contract highs. And if markets is going to be sick, you know, follow the same pattern we've seen in the beans over the last couple of weeks, expect that rally to happen in the overnight session usually by the London close and the US open or our morning bell, we start to see some consolidation against that overnight trend higher. Um, if that pattern continues, let's you know just continue to follow what the chart is trying to perhaps tell us. All right, uh, moving on to corn. Um, daily chart for corn also very sideways. Uh, that 18 day moving average or 19 day moving average, excuse me, it's 18 day on this chart, 744 even. Uh, we haven't even really been down to test it, but it just is creeping up and you know kind of drawing a line of support below this chart. Not overbought or oversold right now. So this market wants to trend higher. It has a plenty of room to do so in terms of its um, momentum indicator. Uh, we have started to go through some trend lines against the highs, which we'll look at on the smaller uh, you know, time frame chart here. Uh, but um, yeah, let's just flip over to that chart right away. There you go. So this trend line from 782 through our highs here, you can see how we broke through it. We came back down to test it as support in the 1750 area, or 750, 17 in the seven handle. Come on, beans and corn, uh, you're killing me here. Uh, trying to report on this stuff and keep the numbers straight, it's hysterical. Um, we're, but uh, it's a good problem to have, right? 50% retracement from the 726 lows here uh, from, what was that? Three, four or early March here. We, we, we held it in, in the pullback there yesterday and the lows down in the 745 area. It's also a trend line against the lows. Boy, did the market recover, spike up to a new high, just like corn likes to do every time we get a new high for the week, new contract high or even high for the day, it seems to get a pullback. And uh, as is tradition, we saw that pullback uh, ensue here into the later part of the day. But generally speaking, support held from the lows of yesterday through the highs of today, suggesting, you know, again, Little trend line here against the highs that maybe was resistance here into the morning. We broke out of, we held it as support, 50% line. This market, in my opinion, has every ability now to test towards 775 uh, and perhaps above. Now, can't rule out that the market may want to test down to 750 again. That seems like a pretty um, pretty supported level at this point, but um, I, I need to see us break below 750 for us to think we're going back down to 730. And honestly, in the next leg down, I'd almost hope we get down to 720 to 710 I'd be a much bigger buyer down there. I'd probably take the trade out towards July to make sure we have enough time because the April through May timeframe, it's going to be right. If, if this trend goes the same way it did last year, which we looked at in last week's strategy of the week update, we'll look at it again tomorrow was, you know, how did we get to the contract highs last, uh, last spring and in, in summer 
into that June high. Well, it began with a $2 rally in both corn and beans at this time of the year. Uh, and that doesn't mean we couldn't trade 30, 40 cents lower in the corn, dollar lower in the beans before bouncing back higher and doing that. Last year, we saw some volatility going through this planning prospectus report that we're seeing are coming out in the quarterly grain stocks estimates um, that are coming out. That was the last buying opportunity for soybeans before that rally. Corn had already kind of started its move. Um, so we're kind of, you know, with that same mindset that this could be the starter pistol for that next cyclical rally into the springtime, we've got a lot of the same cross currents going on with maybe even more bullish undertones because of inflationary pressures of war breaking out. Um, and again, yet another year of China going hand to mouth on their purchasing for soybeans and other ag products, but it seems to be an insatiable ap appetite. Um, so how long do we need to watch them do that before we convince ourselves that that is, I don't want to say here to stay, but, you know, uh, a billion people, 1.3 billion, what, however many it is now, hungry mouths, um, still need to be fed. All that being said, um, we have a very similar climate last year, very similar chart structure with this kind of bullish pennant uh, going into the planting prospects report. And last year, this resulted in a $2 rally higher. That occurs from here. We're talking close to $10 corn, $20 beans. And those are prices that we've already seen on the international table being paid by the end consumer in China and uh, in Asia. So um, that's inflation, baby. Um, 50% pullback still. We're expecting uh, this May corn to stay above 750. We'll see. Um, see if that continues to happen. But uh, you know, every new high, whether it's a daily time frame, weekly time frame, contract high for uh, and even monthly high for corn, seems to be met with a pullback. So just be aware of that in your own trading plan. Um, but uh, I think that uh, we're gearing up for that move higher. And we'll talk about tomorrow if we <laughs> if we haven't ran. Uh, we know, a whole way away uh, by tomorrow's strategy week update. We'll be talking a lot about how to position if we haven't already the call spreads, calls, futures um, for that rally, and what are some of the other things to look out for into this planning prospect report uh, going going into next week um, and into the start of April. So um, we today very inside price action. Not much to say. It's an 11.50 to 10.50 dollar range. Uh, I am watching this full 50% uh, retracement from the 10.31 low to the 11.69 high for the wheat. I don't like that we broke below some trend lines here and we kind of been holding them as resistance, but the truth is that this just looks like a range here until it's not. Uh, the 50% off of the highs is up around 12 bucks. So it's interesting to see that if this 50% line here at $11 kind of holds and we it, yeah, it could go down to 1080 still, but uh, if it holds in this area, you know, this, uh, this supportive price band, uh, the, or inflection zone, we would expect a trend higher to, to take us up towards 12. And that's the, you know, negative 23.6 line of that long or that 50% line. So maybe the technicals would take over in a market where the new cycle has gotten very drawn out. Uh, and I think at this point, pretty much priced in, in terms of the damage to the acres and, and what we've seen for wheat production out of Europe being able to make to the market uh, and Russia. Um, so wheat's very comfortable above $10 at this time. And I think that's what the chart's telling us. Um, I still think it's probably going to test $12. It's going to break out of $12.50 and go to new highs. That's up for the wheat market to decide. But this might be the area to position for that type of trend or swing trade if that's what you're looking for. If we start to break down though, below $11, below $10.50, there's not much that's going to stop us from getting back down to nine. So I do have a line in the sand here. I'm bullish above there below that $10.50 area in the wheat uh, on the near term. And uh, if we do start to slip below, I do think we could see $1.50, $2 lower. Maybe find a bottom down there before coming back up to test 10 to 12. And, you know, we'll see how the rest of the spring plays out. So, all right. Well, with all that being said, everybody, thanks for joining me here today for our strategy of the day update. Uh, do join me tomorrow for the strategy of the week. If you haven't signed up and join that mailing list, do so in the, um, in the, uh, information section of this video. Uh, there's also a free strategy or excuse me, our free Zaner daily newsletter that we offer to, uh, our clients and uh, anyone looking to subscribe to it. Uh, it's completely free. Uh, and it gives you a good uh, you know, news drop of what's going on 
in the ag markets uh, today. So with all that being said, everybody, have a great day. Thanks for joining me here again today. We reached over here at Zaner at 312-277-0110 to help you out with any of your trading, uh, hedging, or commodity risk management needs. Find me on Twitter, Dan SOTD, right here on Facebook, or shoot me an email, dhuzzy at zaner.com. If you're looking to make a switch or do something with your brokerage operation or for your execution, do it now before you get into these into the full swing of planting and the rest of the year. Uh, this is the opportunity to get all of that done. So have a great day, everybody. We'll be back with you all as price action develops. Take care, everyone.